Yeah, three straight on the road. Well, nice was it to get some practice time in, get back into routine, and and come out with a, a solid match and win it in three here. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, really nice to be at home, kind of that extra day of practice, like you mentioned. Um, we were able to really get after it on um, Tuesday and Wednesday and then kind of focus on scouting report. Um, so definitely nice to be back in Bowler. Um, I thought the crowd was great. I was a little nervous because everybody all week has been talking about the next match uh, that we weren't trying to mention. Um, but I was, you know, impressed with the crowd and the way our girls came out from the beginning. Um, we've been talking about, you know, starting a little faster, which, you know, we did at Oregon as well. Um, so it was nice to see that in the first set. At 417 on the night, uh, what'd you think of your attack and, and most importantly, your setter, Ar Argentina? Yeah, um, you know, we had talked about that Cal um, really had only, um, or they had been out hitting their opponents. Um, you know, only Stanford had out hit them. And so that was kind of a challenge to our team to get it going offensively. And that, of course, starts with the pass and the set. Um, I thought Argentina played a great match tonight, um, was aggressive um, from all areas um, and um, offensively as well. So I um, was impressed with her. Staying on Argentina, you've called her um, maybe the most underrated setter in the conference. I think at this point it could be fair to say could be one of the best setters in the conference. What has she done to get herself to that point? I mean, there's probably natural skill in there, but what have you seen her do over the last couple of years to, to get to this level? Yeah, for sure. Um, super athletic. Uh, you know, we've all seen her as a, one of our outside hitters. Um, so that's pretty uh, special. But um, just the work that she has put in, especially last year, I think, um, you know, coming in and being, um, you know, the starting setter, taking over the reins, um, really put in a lot of extra work. Um, and so then that um, has kind of shown through, I think, all spring and then summer. She was with the Mexican national team for a little bit as well. Um, and she's just one of those players that wants to get better and wants to, you know, do well for her teammates. And um, I don't think she has reached her peak yet. Um, and so that's fun to see her just um, continuing to get better. Like we keep t talking about, um, you know, her attacking as well. And you saw her kind of attack all over the place. We've been working on that deep corner uh, tip. So you probably saw us get all excited uh, for that. So, you know, she's not done yet either. 90% uh, side out percentage in the first set, 80% yeah, that, that'll work. Yeah, <laughs> 80 in the third. Um, what does that tell you about your team? Uh, yeah, you know, we talk about any time it's we're over 66%, um, you're usually going to win. Um, so we'll definitely take that uh, percentage. I think uh, we re really, especially in that first set, we're focusing on, you know, not letting um, them get more than one point in a row. There was a couple times in the second and the third where they kind of rattled off a little streak, but um, just we did a nice job passing, um, especially in that first set, and our hitters were just kind of on fire. So, uh, yeah, we'll take that side out percentage anytime. Uh, you've now achieved the highest ranking in program history uh, in your winners of 14 straight, surpassing your own playing career. What God, advice we keep have, doing that. <laughs> what advice have you been giving your players about uh, handling success and, and maintaining focus? Yeah, you know, I think um, just how we approach every single day at practice, it's, um, you know, no different than it really has been. Um, one match at a time. Um, you know, it's really about the process with our team and what we can get better at um, every single week. And I think even after the wins, there's a lot that we still can get better at. And so I think as coaches, you know, we're uh, we have some pretty high standards um, and, you know, even with this ranking and um, the success that we've had, those standards just kind of keep getting higher and higher. Um, and the team is. Um, you know, I think enjoying that, you know, they like the challenge. They like to get after it and practice and get better. And, and they know um, that we're certainly not done yet. And, and number four ranking in October, whatever it is, October 6th doesn't mean anything. Um, and so we're going to just keep trying to get better. Uh, and then I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, but Magda leads to the conference in hitting percentage and blocks per set, uh, RH third in assists and Carly's third in digs per set. Uh, how important has the, the core been in like, you know, being able to lead the conference in these stats, uh, how dominant has the team been? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes it's tough because we have so many hitters um, that can have a great night and, um, you know, either get the percentage or lead us in kills. It kind of 
takes away from, you know, maybe just the one player. Um, same thing with digs. You know, uh, Julia Norville had a career high, you know, last Sunday with 17 digs and Carly had 16. So kind of spreading the wealth there. Um, you know, so the, the stats are great and things like that. But I think our team is um, just more concerned about winning and, and um, you know, doing it all together. And, you know, I think you saw Megda was, um, you know, she had had the most players of the week now of anyone in Pac-12 history. Uh, but, you know, she's so humble that uh, all of those are really team awards and, and our players aren't going to get those awards if our team's not winning. And so um, it's just fun for everybody um, to just have that success. So Cal's home to one of the most exciting freshmen in, in the conference, and Maggie Lee. How, how did you approach facing her, and, and what was that like? Yeah, she is good. Um, and Cal is much improved um, from what they have been, and, and I think that's what we talked about all week is, um, you know, this isn't the Cal that has been. They've been playing really, really well, and, um, you know, trying to slow her down is a tough task. And um, I think once you see her in person and her heavy arm and and the way she can move the ball around, she's going to be a fantastic player um, in the future, and, and we're going to have to face her again, you know, down at their place. So um, we could probably make a few adjustments on her, but, um, you know, great credit to her. She's a great player. And another sellout coming up on Sunday, um, and then, you know, lots of – Fun had tonight here as well. What have you seen from kind of the marketing efforts around the team, and what is like kind of what, what have you appreciated the most about the spirit and the support of the team? Yeah, you know, I think um, you know when we got this new TerraFlex floor and the new bleachers and the block, um, you know, try, we're we're always trying to create a home court advantage and a great atmosphere. Um, and I think uh, the students especially have kind of embraced the block, and um, you know, it's been really fun to see. Um, just the atmosphere that gets created. And um, for sure, we've had the fire marshals in almost every day <laughs> talking about Sunday already. And and they have been great trying to figure out, you know, where more standing room only can stand and, and we can get as many people in here as we can safely, of course. Uh, but, you know, it's been uh, just so great to have the crowd and the people in Pullman and driving down from Spokane and Tri-Cities or wherever people are coming from, um, getting here early, and um, it's just great. We appreciate the support for sure. So going into, of course, a big match on Sunday, um, of course, we talk about ma managing expectations and kind of handling success and all that, but what's kind of an underrated part of your preparation that maybe doesn't get talked about as much that you might want to mention? Yeah, you know, I think um, probably our athletic trainer and our strength and conditioning coach, um, you know, they're behind the scenes and they're working their tails off, um, you know, every single week for treatment and, and you know, making sure, you know, we don't have nagging injuries and things like that. So I would probably say tons of credit go to them, um, you know, just what they do every day with our student athletes. So it's safe to say that you guys did pretty well at the service line tonight with uh, eight service aces or whether it was just challenging Cal really well. What was your approach going into the game with that tonight? And was that something that you worked on during process, practices uh, during the week? Yeah, we've... Um I think pretty much since we went to Texas, we've uh, really been trying to up our, our service game and just be much more aggressive from the service line. You know, it's such a weapon um, if you have multiple servers that can move the ball around and um, like even Magda tonight, which she hasn't even been serving the entire season, you know, goes out there and, and gets some aces as well. So just, I think we, we put in a lot of time and effort um, serving in practice um, and the team will tell you that, you know, we're like, we talked about high standards, um, you know, in practice, we've got some pretty high standards of what we're trying to do and um, it has certainly paid off. Coach, what does this mean big picture for you as a player who played in this program took over this program and now you're at a point where Sunday the eyes of college volleyball are going to land on Pullman. Um, have you had a chance to think about just what that means for you personally and kind of your journey as a Coug and then as the coach of Washington State? Um, you know I haven't thought about it a whole lot. Um, you know it, it's pretty cool I'll, I'll have to say. Um, you know when we you know, I was here as a player. We were we were pretty good. You know, went to the Elite Eight, the Sweet Sixteen, then came back as an assistant coach. We did the same thing. Um, you know, took over a program that was zero and eighteen, and um, in a pretty tough 
position. Um, and it took six years, you know, to get us back. And those were a long six years. Um, I went through a lot of hair dye and <laughs> wrinkle cream. Um, you know, and just to get it, we were just so excited to get back to the NCAAs. And now, you know, we're going for eight, our eighth straight. Um, you know, so just all those players, I think, that really bought in and believed. And and now we're at a place that I think everyone's just really super proud of. So um, it's been fun so far. We're certainly not done. Um, you know, we're just trying to protect our home court, protect Bowler. Um, you know, in 96, we went undefeated in Bowler. I think that's something that I can challenge our players that they haven't beat me at yet. And uh, maybe that'll, maybe they can beat me at that. Um, so that's, uh, it'd be great, but I'm um, just proud of this team and what we've done so far. And we're certainly not done.